A few years ago, some friends and I started a company to try to bring the giant robot battles from science fiction to life. We challenged a Japanese company to a fight, they accepted, and we ran a Kickstarter to upgrade America's robot. A lot of people think we overhyped it because it didn't look like a Transformers battle, but we did put on the world's first giant robot fight. We ran out of money, and I still want giant robots to be a thing, and so I want to transfer some of the lessons we learned to whichever one of you is watching this and wants to carry the torch forward. Okay, there's actually one more reason why I'm making this video. Uh, five years ago, a million dollars was like a crazy amount of money to me, like unfathomably large. And somehow my co-founders and I ended up finding ourselves in a situation where we were directing um, a multi-million dollar budget. I always felt like people who had or controlled money um, would never be open to talking about it. They would either be like really defensive or have something to hide. And as a result, it was really hard for me to have any understanding of money in amounts of more than like a few thousand dollars. They would always say really vague terms like, oh, that person's rich or that was expensive. Uh, but those words don't really mean anything without like real numbers behind them. So my goal here is really nothing more than just to say a bunch of real numbers and expose you to something that I used to find so hard to wrap my mind around. Um, I don't know, hit the like button down below if you find this kind of stuff interesting. Okay, into the numbers. We did all of our accounting in QuickBooks Online, so I'll pull that up. Keep in mind, I am a self-taught accountant, so for those of you who have real backgrounds in this, please comment down below anything I get wrong, and I'll try to float your comments up to the top by hearting them. There are three financial statements that every company should report to give a picture of how it's performing. The balance sheet, the profit and loss, and the statement of cash flows. Together, there's sort of the trifecta of financial transparency. These are the same financial statements that all publicly traded companies like Apple and Tesla need to report every quarter so that their investors can make informed decisions about the condition and health of the business. The balance sheet is a snapshot of the assets and liabilities of a company. Things like how much cash is in the bank, how much debt does the company have, how much product inventory the company has. If you wanted to calculate your own net worth, you'd more or less be figuring out what your personal balance sheet looks like. How much money do you have, plus maybe a car or a house that you own, minus how much money you owe. All of these things are also on a company's balance sheet. The profit and loss, or sometimes called P&L or income statement, is probably the most intuitive financial statement. It shows how much money a company made, the income, and how much a company spent, the expenses, over some period of time. Number three, the statement of cash flows is the most subtle and tricky to understand, and it documents where your cash is going. Here's an example to consider. Let's say you take out a $100,000 loan from a bank and you put that money in your bank account. Even though you increase the cash in your bank account, it doesn't mean you made a profit because you now also owe $100,000. So it wouldn't be on your profit and loss statement. The statement of cash flows helps capture these type of activities. For this video, we'll just be taking a look at the profit and loss statement since it's the one that shows what everybody really wants to know. How much money we made and how much money we spent. Now normally you'd look at a business year by year, quarter by quarter, or if things are changing pretty quickly month by month. Uh, to not make this video super long, I'm just going to generate an all-time P&L. Okay, starting with income, we made 1.04 million from providing services. This is like us getting paid to show up to do appearances, giving rides, licensing our video footage to TV shows, and then advertising income, which is mostly YouTube and Twitch ads. We made about 553K from selling product. The vast majority of this was the merchandise we sold during our Kickstarter back in 2015. Adding together our service and product income, we get around 1.6 million in total revenue over the roughly five years the company was in operation. Now, all those appearances and t-shirts were not free. We have to consider the cost of goods sold, or COGS. This is the cost that we had to pay to actually go do these appearances about 111K in total, and the cost of actually buying all of the t-shirts from the manufacturer, and then paying for shipping and fulfillment, about 192K. We also ran a self-hosted ticket event, 
and that cost us 19.3K to put on. So all in all, it costs us 325K to make our income. When you take your income and then subtract your COGS, you get your gross profit. This is how much of your income you get to keep. Ours was 1.29 million. But we haven't even started paying for running the actual business yet. So now we get to find out how much the business cost. First, the simple stuff. I'm not really sure what the difference in operating costs versus other general expenses are, but for some reason, they're separate in our QuickBooks. Here they are. We spent 434K on rent. Turns out big warehouses with tall enough ceilings to have hoists and cranes are expensive. We spent 81K on utilities, 89K on equipment rental, repair and maintenance was 26K, Operating supplies, which were mainly consumable supplies to keep our robot testing and shop running, was 65K. This category should probably be combined with office supplies down below, and I'm not sure what the difference in these expenses are. Facilities contractors, basically handymen, was 5K. And continuing on to other general expenses, we have office supplies at 352K. I think a lot of this is the same as operating supplies up top. This is bigger than it seems like it should be because it also contains shop supplies like hydraulic component storage systems, pallet racks, um, hoists, welding infrastructure, and more. We spent 900K on administrative contractors. This is large because it includes a lot of technical contractors, fabricators, contracted machine shops, and a bunch of miscategorized video production people that we hired. We spent 66K on insurance, and that should be pretty obvious. We spent 24K on shipping and delivery. This is just shipping things around the country. Think trailers and shipping containers that have robot parts. A big portion of this is probably the relocation of our company from Boston to San Francisco. We spent 46K for digital services. This is G Suite, Dropbox, web hosting, Slack. Microsoft Office, Adobe Creative Suite, QuickBooks, all of our SaaS products that we used. We spent 93K for culture, and that is mostly meals and outings for the team. We spent 265K on lawyers, and that is one thing we spent way, way too much on, but live and learn. The next big category is travel, and it's all pretty obvious what this is. We spent 314K. This also includes hotels and travel meals in addition to airfare. Next is video production, and this is one of my biggest regrets. I think we spent way too much money making TV quality YouTube videos when it was really not necessary. I think we probably would have grown our audience much larger by doing lower budget videos in higher quantities and just paying big YouTube influencers to come and ride in our robots. The categories are all pretty self-explanatory here. Film advertising includes social media promotions and film location fees includes shipping our robots to the film location in Japan. I should also note that we had to pay Sudabashi 100K in licensing fees and another 100K in location fees for them to show up to the duel. This technical category is mostly R&D on Iron Glory and payments to IHMC for the software development for Eagle Prime. These two added up to another 246K. Now, how much did we pay employees? We spent about 2.3 million on wages, 193K on payroll taxes, 173K on retirement and health benefits for the employees, and all of those added up to be about 2.6 million. But we have an 853K credit, and to explain that, I need to talk about something called depreciation. Depreciation is the loss of value of an asset over time. Let's say you buy a car for $20,000. Did your net worth change? Not really, you just changed your $20,000 of cash assets into $20,000 of vehicle assets. So that means you didn't really have an expense, which means it shouldn't really show up on your personal P&L. However, one year later, that same car is probably worth $16,000. So that means over the last year, you can count that $4,000 depreciation as an expense. Eventually, over the lifetime of the car, you will expense the full $20,000. Well, it's the same thing with robots. If you buy $1 million worth of supplies and spend $1 million paying employees to build a robot, did the value of your assets change? Not really. We just converted our cash assets into robot assets. 
Over time, that robot will be worth less and less as it gets used up. And over those years are when you account for the expenses. So the Eagle Prime building portion of our payroll expenses are credited back on our P&L because that cash and labor value is now just stored in a robot asset that's on our balance sheet. Now we really should have been depreciating that robot over the years, but it was so hard to assign a value to it, we just didn't bother. Now that the robots have been sold, they definitely should be depreciated down to the price at which they were sold, but I haven't done that, mostly because the corporation is defunct and there's really no point in cleaning up the books if I don't have to. The accounting pretty much reflects the state of the company at the point I started complete liquidation late last year. So the big question you all wanna know is how much do we spend making the robots? Well, you can see there isn't a super obvious answer, but if you look on our balance sheet, you can see the amount of money that we have allocated to the Eagle Prime asset is about $1.27 million in parts and 868K in labor, which brings us to about $2.14 million. Then you might add in the software development expenses, which is about 100K to get around 2.24 million. I usually say 2.5 million because there's obviously some other stuff to be considered. Test stands, welding, and other fabrication consumables, drill bits, etc. So I just ballpark it at 2.5 million and call it good. Iron Glory isn't on our balance sheet because we decided to depreciate it entirely in year one as an R&D expense. It got up to 135K in parts and probably another 100K in labor. So maybe 235K is the total cost number I would tell people. But again, this isn't counting rent, insurance, shop infrastructure, accounting, and other overhead. The even bigger question is how much money do we spend on everything? Well, we spent every last dollar that ever came into the company. So how much came into the company? 6.75 million in investments, 720K in a bank loan, and 1.6 million in income for a total of 9.07 million. So I hope you have a little bit more of an idea of what goes into business finances and accounting, and I hope you give it some consideration if you decide to start your own giant robot company. I also just added one more thing to the store, this super cool assemble it yourself iron glory kit. Uh, I'm totally blown away by the detail on this thing. Um, it's an exact 135th replica of Iron Glory using the original CAD model and the seats are removable and the canopy actually works. Um, and probably most impressively, the um, hydraulic cylinders actually work when the thing um, sits and stands. It's like super insane. So uh, go take a look at that and um, let me know what you think of that. All right, thanks for watching. I know there's a bunch of armchair entrepreneurs out there that are gonna tell me that we spent a ton of money on really dumb stuff, and I acknowledge that. We gave it our best shot, and the next time around, it will be much better.